we didn't have any new questions in. But last oh, week, I've got our, one. Oh, who's that that's got one? Sorry, it's me, brother. Okay, just that. I've got a little one, if it's okay. Uh, yes, uh, we, we had another one queued up as well, but uh, you, you tell us your question and then we'll, we'll decide which one we'll take first, Pastor. Okay, thank you. Um, my question is, what is God's divine favor? Does God extend more, less or no favor depending on what we do? And depending on the answer to that, what can we do to gain more of God's divine favor? Okay. All right. So what is that? What is favor? What is God's divine favor? Uh, can we do anything to in, to extend or improve it? Or yeah, okay, that's that's a it's a good question. Mm. I, I was just thinking today, and I was just I got four words. I was able to ponder on all of them, and that's where the question came from. And I was thinking of grace, favor, mercy, and blessing. And then um, I, I, I got that question from there. So it's kind of linked. I think we, well, I'll speak for myself. We tend to, especially with grace and, and favor, we, we tend to interchange them, but as to whether or not they mean the same or are different, I concluded that they were different. The only one that I was kind of stuck with or needed more light on it was the favor, as that to me meant totally different from, or that required work in my in my opinion. That that's what I I I, I got. So please, sir, at your mercy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Um. I think the first thing to do is let's let's look at uh, the words themselves and see. So you you talked about grace, yes. and you talked about uh, mercy. mercy and favor. favor. Okay, and blessing. Yes, I I think uh, we will discover that in in some they're, they're interchangeable because they, they mean the same thing in some dimension, but then that, that, then you will notice that there are slight uh, variations to each of them. So let, let's, it, we, our best bet is we'll go to the New Testament and let's, so let's, let's start with grace. I think grace, we're, we're clear on grace. Grace is, 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 is unearned, it's unmerited. Mm -hmm. It, it doesn't involve work. It's, it's, it's uh, what God does because of who he is. All right, so that, I think that's quite, that one is quite, uh, that's quite clear. So God chooses people because he, he decides to, he, he blesses people because he, that's who he is. He gives, uh, he, because he's good, um, he's good to all. Whether they are whether they are nice people or bad people, he's good to everybody. All right. So and that so that that that's grace. That's that's grace. Okay. But when we look at so um, so let, let's let's go to let's go to the New Testament and just look at what the definition of that word grace is first, and then. We will, uh, let's see where it, it, it shows up first in the New Testament. Um, the first, I think the first mention of it is in Luke chapter two, verse 40. Uh, 
um, it, it, this talks about when after Jesus had been presented in the temple um, and how Anna and Simeon came and blessed him, then um, then the, 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 the family returned, Joseph and, and uh, Mary returned with the baby to Nazareth. So verse 39, Luke 2, 39 says, and when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And verse 40 says, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. The grace of God was upon him. That was, that's the first um, mention of grace in the new covenant. In the, in, 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 yeah. In the, in the previous chapter, it's interesting that that same word was translated to favor. Favor, okay, so okay. One thirty. Oh wow, that's good. I didn't. Okay. The same, same word. So okay, so it's and so the grace of God was with him, and that's charis, right? So that's the word charis. Mm -hmm. So let's look up that word charis first. Then we'll go to look. We'll go to look one and see. So it it says favor, thank, thanks, pleasure, acceptable, benefit. Let let me see. If I, graciousness uh, as gratifying of manner or act as abstract or, abstract or concrete literal figurative or spiritual especially the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life including gratitude acceptable benefit favor gift grace graciousness joy liberality pleasure thanks and thanks worthy So uh, that's strong. Thea says it's, it's grace, that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness, grace of speech. Then two, charis is also goodwill, loving kindness, and favor of the merciful kindness by which God, exerting his holy influence upon souls, turns them to Christ keeps, strengthens, increases them in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to the exercise of the Christian virtues. And number three, what is due to grace? The spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine grace, the token or proof of grace, benefit, the gift of grace, benefit, bounty, thanks. All right, so, mm, you can see that it has many, that, that word has many dimensions. It has to do with gratitude, it has to do with bounty, it has to do with uh, favor. Um, but as you, as you go further uh, into the scriptures, it becomes a bit narrower in the definition. When, when by the time Paul starts to tell us that by grace are you saved through faith, it is a gift of God. And we know that that's, that that's categorically the unmerited, unearned favor of God. So, all right. So you can see how grace and favor are pretty much the same thing. I think favor is, is, is a manifestation of grace. That's, that's, that's what I would, I would mm. hazard. But let's, let's go to the other scripture that you looked at. Uh, Luke, 130, did you say? Yes, Pastor. Okay, if you could just read it for us, Luke 130. Um, so it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Mm. So is that word... That, that that word um, favor is, is yes. okay. If we even go to verse twenty eight, 
it's it's also i think it's the same word he said the angel came into her and said hail thou that art highly favored and it's it's uh, one one verse one says literally it translates to much graced much graced uh, let me let me see if i Uh, so it, it's from it's the same root word car from caris. This is carituo, carituo. It says to grace that is in due with special honor, make accepted, be highly favored. To compass with favor, peruse with grace, to honor with blessings. Mm. Yeah. So, um, okay, I think that's, um, that shows dimensions of, so that, that, that when we talk about the grace, what, if we look at, as we study, let, let's, let's go to the scripture that tells us that by grace we're saved. Uh, Ephesians 2, verse 8. Okay, so that's the, it's the same word, uh, charis. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Mm -hmm. All right not of works, lest any man should boast. Mm -hmm. So you can see that with this grace, that answers your question, Sister Abner. With mm -hmm. this dimension of grace, there's no works. Work, there are no works attached to it. Mm -hmm. The grace that leads to salvation is, is, has no works attached to it. It's just purely by faith. Okay, the, and the grace that saves, is, is, it, 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 it has no the works are God's works, it's God that does the work, you know. So there's no there's no work that we do. But there is there is favor that comes. So now let's let's look at the word favor, see if we can. Um, Go to the new covenant and see what favor says. First, uh, let, me, let me give you my baby, my baby definition. It was uh, it's proof, proof of God's approval in our lives. That's that's what I defined uh, it for myself. <laughs> a favor with that that's that that that's good. That that that's good. Um, it's it's a nice it's a nice definition. <laughs> Um, okay, the the first one again, I think is one thirty. And the angel said unto her, "Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor." And again, that word is that's carries, you know. So mm -hmm. it's the same. It's the same word there that's translated. So it, they could easily have said that you found grace with God. Okay, so there is there is a there's a dimension of 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 grace that is favor that it's it's the unmerited, uh, unearned favor that God bequeaths on you. Okay, all right, but favor on its own is not always unmerited. Mm -hmm. I think that's what that's what I I wanted to point out. Favor is not always unmerited. There is you can you can earn some favor, you can earn favor. You you can you sometimes by being in a family, for example, you have favor because you are part of that family. By working, doing certain works, you you enjoy favor. By obedience, you you enjoy favor. God God actually makes it very clear that 
you, you, there's, a, there's a dimension of favor that we enjoy through obedience. Uh, and, and I think that's, uh, that's different from the, 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 the grace that leads to salvation, I think. So, um, let me see if, I, if we can, I, I'm just trying to see if we can find any. another scripture for with favor or pastor. yes yes so where where we can see favor in a different mm. i think what the, the this is the one that actually got me thinking to begin with i think it's um acts 247 when it says yes. praising god and praising having god favor and with favor all the people with all the people mm. yeah so i was wondering well, well, i thought it only came from god and i was just asking myself questions so then why people so, and because God yeah. can, when, when you have favor with God, the Bible says, when a man's ways are pleasing unto God, even his enemies are at peace with him. When you have favor with God, one, by the way, one of the dimensions of grace is that you enjoy favor with men. Because mm -hmm. he said, Jesus grew in, 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 in grace and stature and in favor with God and men. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I believe that one of the manifestations of God's favor is that men favor you because obviously some of the things that you are going to need and some of the things that show that you are favored are things that men give that are, that are things upon the face of the earth. So um, I, I believe that the favor of men is part of the grace of God. But then the favor of men can also be, you can, you can, uh, and what's the word I want? And and you and so <laughs> you can attract or, or you can I I can't find the word now. It's and something. You 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 can actually win favor by doing certain things. So, for example, the Bible says that a man's gift will make room for him. So. When you give people stuff, you know, you have favor with them. It's a, that that is that 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 the Bible tells us very categorical, and and we know that from experience that when when you give people stuff, you have favor with them. You enjoy favor with them. So um, I I think that uh, all grace involves favor but not all favor can be defined as grace per se i don't know if if you understand what if that makes sense all 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 grace would involve favor but favor cannot be fully de de defined purely as unmerited favor you know unmerited grace uh, you know un unmerited because there's there's some favor that you can win there's some favor that you you can earn See, if you get to work early and you do your job very diligently, you will have favor with your boss. You will have favor with the organization. They will like you. And they, they, they will seek you out and you may get promotion and you may get certain things that come because of your diligence and your uh, industry and your faithfulness and all that. So I, I, I think that's, um, I hope that that sort of, put some kind of perspective. Let, let, let me give you an illustration that most of us don't, uh, no, don't really know, but I've, I've said this over and over again. When you talk about um, fornication, when we were growing up, fornication was always um, defined as sex outside of marriage and then Adultery was sex with uh, somebody who was married who had uh, liaison, sexual. Uh, but that that is actually it's, it's wrong. It's completely wrong. That's not it's not that's not the Bible. That's not how the Bible defines uh, fornication at all. Uh, fornication is 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 from the Greek word porneo. Porneo, from where we get the word 
pornography. Uh, it's also the word from which we get pornos. Pornos is a, a prostitute, a male prostitute, a female prostitute. Uh, 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 you know, so it, it's it, um, fornication is every form. It's the umbrella but umbrella um, name for every form of sexual immorality, starting from um, evil thoughts to um, uh, incest to uh, adultery to uh, pedophilia to any any form of um, sexual immorality to having sex outside of marriage to adultery all of it is 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 classified as fornication all right that's the that's the umbrella name for sexual immorality then adultery is is where we, we, is that which has to do with somebody who, where, where one or both partners are married? That's adultery. All right. So all now I I I, I took that illustration because I wanted to I, I just wanted to relate it to what I've just said. All adultery is fornication, but not all fornication is adultery. So all. All grace, all favor is grace, but, but not, not all grace. All, let's say, all grace ha, in, involves favor, but not all favor is, is purely defined as grace, you know, because favor can be something that you get from working, from being diligent, from being kind, from giving gifts, uh, from being obedient, and so on. So I, that's that's uh, that's that's where I want to leave it. I, I open the floor now to anybody else who wants to to add, subtract, or ask any questions in relation to that. Sister, I, mean, I, I hope that I hope that puts it in some kind of perspective. Yes, Pastor, it does. So, Pastor, mm -hmm. in relation to all the pluses to gaining favor, um, yeah. I would say yeah. for the purposes of our argument, with regards to uh, God and man you could also be on the opposite side and not gain the favor right yes oh yes okay. yes right. if you walk in disobedience God loves you but he doesn't like your ways yeah and God can fight against you when you are rebellious yeah so yeah God loves everybody God loves everybody doesn't want any to perish, but it's only those who obey that actually get his attention. All right. Does anybody want to have anything else they want to add to this? It's very quiet today. What? Well, so we, did, we didn't hear the question. We just, I'm just. Oh, you didn't hear the question. I, could, I just I heard read grace and favor. I know we've been talking about grace and favor, but. Okay, sure okay. Mean. Yes, I, I think what Sister Abner was asking was whether, um, what was the difference between grace and favor and mercy, and whether you could work to end, whether you could work for favor, work for grace, or, or, or not, you know. And what what the difference was so we try to look at the definitions of, of the words and then we, we try to uh, to see what which was which one is the umbrella word and which one is a subsection so I think we we, we decided that grace is is unmerited that it, it, it's that the word the words that were used for grace and favor and mercy sometimes are the same word but God, as we go into the test, the, the, the scriptures, God actually narrows grace down to that um, finished work, the, 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 the benefits of the finished work. And we looked at um, Ephesians 2 8, where it says, By grace you are saved through faith, not of works. It's a gift of God, so that no one can boast. So, God, by that definition, 
makes grace very narrow. So grace involves favor. So you enjoy favor and mercy in grace. But the specific grace that leads to salvation, he, God makes it very clear that that is, that is, you don't work for that. You've not earned it. You can't earn it, you, you know. Uh, whereas with favor, the global uh, uh, word favor, you can actually win favor with God. You can win favor with men. You can win favor by being diligent. You can win favor by being obedient. You can win favor by being industrious. You can win favor by, you know, um, by giving gifts to people. So we talked of various ways by which you can actually win people's favor. And by the way, you can actually win God's favor. You can actually win God's favor. There are certain uh, uh, blessings and promises that are contingent on, that are conditional and contingent on obedience. They are not, they are not, um, they are not like you haven't, you don't have to do anything to get those. So, for example, the goodness of God, everybody enjoys that. You didn't, you don't have to repent to to breathe the air to enjoy the goodness and favor of God in that dimension. But when it comes to salvation. You have to, of course, you have to believe, um, and all that. So uh, that, so that's that. That that was the question, and that's how we attempted to answer it. So I don't know if that helps. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. All right. If there's no nothing else, anybody wants to add, or or anybody, is there any question that arises from this? Is there anything that? Um, we look at and say, well, and, and I'm not sure that I understand this or that that makes sense. And let's, this is the time to ask before we move on because there's another question we want to answer. I want to try and tackle. All right, nobody else. Okay, good. All right, we'll move on. We'll move on. Um, uh, Brother Tim, help us with the question, the second question. Thank Quite you. an interesting one. So the, the the question was was raised a couple of weeks ago, and it it says we know from scriptures, and I read this question out last week, so hopefully some of us have had a look at it. it. Says we know from scriptures how some of the disciples died, but it wasn't recorded in the scriptures how others like Paul died. Why? Even though from historical records, we learn this information, but does it mean that this doesn't matter? And, and that's why it wasn't recorded in the scriptures. Okay, I'm going to throw it out to the, uh, since you all, I, I wasn't around last week. Uh, I was on a pastoral visit, so, uh, you guys had an opportunity to get a pre prelude uh, and you heard the question i'm hearing it for the first time well i mean the second time but a team called me earlier in the in the evening to tell me about it but you guys have had a, a week and a half to, to to ponder on it so you should have answers so i i i, I should come and learn from you guys at, i should come and sit at the table too and learn uh, so yes anybody who had a chance to look at it do you want to answer this very, it's a very, I think it's quite a, it's a good question that, you know, we all ask ourselves. We, there are, these are things that we ask ourselves about, not just this one, but many other aspects of the scriptures. Uh, why is this not said? Why is this not recorded? What, what happened to this person or this situation and why, uh, you know? So yeah, uh, anybody who wants to, kick off please let's okay um I, i'll have you go okay. i i really didn't um <laughs> i totally forgot about the question okay i just said it now um but i just i, I just give my own perspective um about it um so for me i i i, I don't think it matters I, 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 I don't think it matters simply because I don't think it's that the Bible doesn't mention it. It means 
you know, the Holy Spirit, one, one of the scriptures that, 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 that I kind of go by is, um, there's a scripture in John that says, um, says there's so many things that Christ did, for instance, that are not written. And if, if they were to be written, there would not be enough books to contain it. But it says the things that are written, these that are written are written that you might believe. So I think in summation, the, the, the information that we need for our faith to, to do life, to, for our faith in Christ to thrive and to grow, um, all that is in there. Now, historically, when we find out this information about some of the ways maybe some of the apostles died, um, yeah, they, maybe they help us in some way to they just add information to us. But I think the, in terms of spiritually, in terms of our growth, in terms of um, being rooted and grounded in Christ um, and being equipped to do life, um, to minister, to, to carry the gospel to where it should go, uh, both in relation to ourselves and to our family. Um, I personally don't think it really matters um, because then one could ask, where does it end? Because I, like when, I was, when I was a young Christian, for instance, I used to, um, and I still do, and I kind of balance in my mind, you know, that I know sometimes we like to um, hop on about the major characters in scriptures that the Bible talks about. Like, for instance, when I think about the apostles, for instance, um, there were 12 of them, but there are only a few of them that we kind of focus on, um, or at least the Bible kind of focuses on to an extent. So the, you know, we hear about John a lot, we hear, hear about Peter, we hear about Paul, we hear about James. Um, but I, sometimes I, I often wonder what happens to the likes of Thaddeus, you know, what happens to the likes of the, the ones that are not mentioned. But Bato we, Bartholomew. <laughs> Bartholomew, you know, all those guys. But um, uh, or Thomas, beyond the Thomas, what we know about him, about him doubting and then saying my Lord, but it, pretty much in Acts, they were quiet. But we know that these guys were doing stuff, they were busy doing things. So I think the, the things that God would want us to know, he, he, by the Holy Spirit, he kind of focuses on and, and raise people to, to, in a sense, document these things and then put them in, and they were accepted as a canon, what we call the Bible, you know, for us to be able to live. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just, I just, I think um, that when, when I get to heaven, yeah, just we'll ask the question and say, okay, what happened? I would like to know what ba um, Barnabas, for instance, sorry, is it Barnabas? Paul and, Paul and Barnabas, yes. I'd like to know what Barnabas was doing when he split up with Paul, for instance, because Luke only, because Luke was documenting and he stayed with Paul, we see all these things that Paul was doing. But equally, Barnabas could have been doing equally the same kind of thing on the other side, you know? I'd like to know yeah. what he was doing as well. Um, but I don't really sit down, start cracking my brain to say what was Barnabas doing. I just know that he, whatever he was doing, he was doing by the spirit of God and it worked, you know? So um, that's my take. I don't, I don't know that it's, it, it's particularly important or should affect us or should derail us or, yeah. you know, one way or the other, yeah. Thank you, Tunji, thank you so much. Yes, anybody else want to add to that? Um, okay. Yes, go ahead. I just, I think in, in addition and in support of what Brother Tunji said, it, it's interesting. Um, so looking at the question, actually, how many, how many were recorded? So I, I agree with the, with the submission that it doesn't, I don't think it particularly matters either. Uh, not least because I think the record shows that there were two that were recorded uh, and one of the two was Judas. Anyway, so that's that's one of the two, and then the the other one was um, James. Um, so it, in in reality, that those two, okay, Judas. I, I think there's some things that we've been able to learn from what happened to Judas, and th there's a thing that you say uh, you've reminded us of quite often, a Pastor, about um, Judas, and if you know if it only waited. Um, yeah. You know, what that would be so I think that that's actually quite a key thing but James for example was just mentioned once that you know Herod was interested in in killing more people uh, and took the sword to James and, and killed him and then then that was just one line um, what do we learn from that I, I don't yeah so I, I think it, it's just quite interesting that of, of the two one of them is is the one that nobody actually really wants to remember anyway because it's Judas so and the others okay what well, does it matter yeah thank you thank you so much yes okay thank you both um i think 
you've, you've encapsulated my, my thoughts on the matter as well. Uh, the Bible is the benchmark. It is the benchmark for Christian living. It is the revelation of what God wants, wants to say to humanity. That's it, it's the Bible. Uh, it, it is, a, a lot of people say like they, that scripture that Tunji used where it says there were many other things written. Some people have used it actually to their own detriment where they now say that is why we do some of the things we do because the Bible says that, but that's, 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 that's not what that scripture was designed to do. You see, the letter killeth. What the scripture was designed to do is that to say God has given us a benchmark the scriptures by which we judge every activity, every human activity, every desire, every um, every action, and and by which we get wisdom to go forward. So that's quite categorical. So anything that's not revealed in scripture directly is not. Uh, it could be important, but you cannot make a doctrine of it, you know? So um, you have to be careful because you have to, when the Bible says that we should test every spirit, how do you test it? How do you test the spirit? You test it by the revealed word of God. That's how, that's the test. It, the litmus test is the Bible. That's the litmus test. And it tells you that any script, any spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God is not of God. Full stop. There's another scripture, Deuteronomy 29, 29. It says, Deuteronomy 29, 29. It says, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. That, that's a very, very telling scripture that sort of answers. It says there are certain things God has hidden away. They're secret. They don't, we don't know the answer. We, 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 they're they not revealed things. And they're not revealed because they're not important. You see, a lot of times we're asking questions about things that are, 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 it, are probably important for our curiosity, but not necessarily important. They're definitely not important for our salvation, and they're not important for our uh, walk with God. All right? Everything we need for life and godliness has already been given to us in Christ Jesus and is revealed in the scriptures. So, um, and then, there are certain things you can imply from the scriptures as well. Um, but again, that, that's about as much as, as far as it goes. You imply and then you leave it there. You don't, you don't get into uh, a fight or doctrinal issues about it. For example, we are, we are told that Peter himself, we are told that uh, this by the kind of death by which he would glorify the Lord. Now, that implied that he was also going to be put to death. It, it was very clear because it said, when you, are, when you were young, you went wherever you wanted to. But when you grow older, you will be led to places you don't want to go to. And then the Bible says that this was... So, without saying Peter was going to be martyred, that scripture implies that he was going to be martyred. It's very clear. Mm, yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, uh, again, now, we are, church history tells us how he was martyred, that he was crucified upside down because mm. he, he actually said he didn't want to be crucified the same way his master was that. He, he wasn't worthy of that. So, now, that's, that's church history. That's where... That's not something that, it doesn't matter to us whether, how he was crucified, whether it's crucified upside down, sideways. It doesn't matter whether he was killed or not. That, what, that really doesn't affect my salvation. What matters is that Jesus was killed. Mm. 
that's what affects my salvation because Peter is not my Lord. He's not my master. He's not my God. I can learn certain things from him, but what I cannot find about him, I can find in Jesus. Mm. So it, it really doesn't matter too much, you know? Um, and if you say, well, his death would help us to know that we also, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. There's enough of it. There's enough of what God has said about us dying and cruc being crucified that we don't need Peter's own to be, uh, to, and if it is not clear, then we don't need it because we have enough. Mm. All right. So that's, that's uh, so it, it was not relevant. It's important, but not relevant. And it's important to God, but probably not important to your life. Mm. Mm. So that's why God does not. So for example, uh, how I die may not be important to anybody else, but it may be important to God. It, would, it definitely mm. would be important to God. Mm. So it, it, nobody needs to make a doctrine of how I live or how I die, you know, but what God, God to whom I live and to whom I die is making, is taking records. So um, I, I think that's, that's the, the thing to bear, to, to, to note that, uh, that um, if it is not recorded in scriptures directly, then it's not important enough. It, it's not, it's not, um, it, it's, 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 it's not salient or cogent to your salvation. It's not, mm -hmm. it does not affect your salvation. That's why God didn't record it. If it is going to affect your salvation, mm. God will record it. it is everything that you need for life and godliness, God has given you in Christ in, and, and as revealed through the scriptures. Okay. Pastor. Yes. Just as we are talk, uh, talking now, um, the, a, a number of scriptures were coming to my mind. They were just crystallizing. Yes. Oh, let, let's go round over them quickly. Yes. So, so right now, you just said, you just said, um, starting from a number of things, but you, you said, um, uh, Peter's death, and then you, you reference your own death as well. That Peter's death would be would have been important to God, but it's not important for me. Um, yeah. My my death, your death, our death would be important to God, but it might not. It doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. And mm. this would just just pop to my my mind. Um, um, Psalms one sixteen verse fifteen that confirms that it says, "Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints." Of His saints, exactly. So so, so it's every mm. every one, every believer, every Body. Men may despise the people and, yeah. and treat them shabbily, but they, it is precious in God's sight. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, the other thing I wanted to mention is when, when you quoted from Deuteronomy 29, 29, I just, <laughs> even though like, I've known that scripture forever, I've just made the connection that that's the, that's the Old Testament equivalent of that, that John 20 scripture, isn't it? Yes, you know, exactly. Because, because, yes. Because it says the secret things belong to the Lord. Um, yeah. The things that are revealed are for us that we may do the words do the of, words you know, of this law. Yeah. It means, it means that the things is revealed is for us to be able to obey so, him. He's given us everything we need to. Thank so, you. Yeah. Just, just, just kind of, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. When you when you quoted that scripture in John, immediately I I, it, I saw the I, I because I had already uh, marked uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29 as part of the answer. But as soon as you quoted that, John, I said, aha, this is the connection. This is it. You see the equivalent. Yes. I just, I just, I just made the connection tonight. To you. Yes. You, you overlay it and yeah. you can see that it's, yeah, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, um, I, I think that answers the question. Does anybody have anything else, anything arising, matters arising from this issue, any questions? Or any new question that arises that okay now that you said that what about this? Let's let's quickly we have ten minutes. Pastor, just for me, like what you said, I I always ask myself, what does having that information help my with my work with God? That's you it. Know? If it does not, then why why am I stressing myself? I'm bothering about it, you know, yeah. because it does not help my work with God and my salvation, like you said. Then I don't need to know. You know, mm. there's enough yeah. in the Bible that I've not even known. Yes, that, yeah, exactly. There's yeah. not, I will not go, so it's not necessary for me. You know, yeah. So. yeah. 
And then there are some things that God will reveal to you, extra Bible that, you know, information God will give to you. And they just, they help you, they put your heart at ease, but they're not things that you can now start saying, oh, uh, this is a doctrine. Yeah, and a lot of people do that. They take their own personal experience, visions that God gave to them to explain certain things to them. And then they want to make it a doctrine. You can't mm. make it a doctrine. Mm, 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 mm. You can't. You can't make it a doctrine just because God showed it to you. And it may have been God that showed you. We have no doubt about it. It may have been God. We, we're not, we, don't, we don't necessarily think that you had a demonic vision. No, no. It may have been God. But just because it was God does not mean it becomes a doctrine because mm. it's, not, it's not revealed in the body of scripture. So we can't now take it as being, it's like all these visions that people have of heaven where they will talk about, we saw heaven and then they want me to, to, to on the basis of that. Now, I, I, if you saw heaven, I believe that there's heaven and I thank God that you saw heaven. But your description of heaven is not, that's not, I'm not going to now base my life, my, my life on your description of heaven. No. No, sir. No. Mm. Because if it is not revealed in the word of God, I can't, I can't, how do I know, I, you know? I, I'm sorry. I can't accept that. You know? Your, your, your description of heaven, your divisions you got, that's beautiful. What, what does it help me do? It helps me you know, watch out, be careful about the things I do say and all that, but I'm not going to now take your description of heaven and begin to preach it as if it is the Bible. It's not the Bible, it is your, it's a revelation God gave to you um, to help you and to encourage us, but not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not doctrine of Bible, it's not Bible. So I'm, I'm very skeptical about a lot of those things, not because they are not from God. No, no, no. I'm, it's, I'm, not, I'm not, not saying that at all. I just feel that they, they, you, you, you have to put it in its perspective and tell us that having seen that vision, this is what the Bible says, you know? So the vision has driven me to the Bible to, to realize that I must forgive people. You know, that's what, I, that's what I mean. And then that forgiveness, it won't be because of what you said, that so I saw people burning in hell because they didn't forgive people, uh, blah 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 blah. No, no, that's mm, mm, mm. you will show me that I saw that vision and it brought me back to the fact that God said we sh that if we do not forgive, you know, we will not be forgiven. In that, and by the way, that was Old Testament, and and you know, but what, what I'm saying is your your revelation must drive me you to the scriptures and your revelation, if you are going to share revelation with me, it must be how scripture, how it took you to scripture. And so that when I'm living, I'm living with scripture, not your revelation. I don't know if anybody understands what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, pastor. Mm. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Anything else? Doesn't even the scripture agree with that because um, just like you said, there are times that God might give us experiences, visions, dreams, whatever, that, that are personal and mm. that he doesn't want me to reveal, you know? Yeah. And I do think about Paul when he was saying it, I think in Corinthians somewhere. He said, he said it. Um, that there are some visions that, he, that God gave he him. God that, that it was not lawful for him to reveal. For him to reveal, you know? So, um, so there are times that God, there, there are certain things that we see that we, that we know or certain understanding that we get as we work with God that, maybe just personal to us and he doesn't want us to um and you're quite right i mean I, I thank you sir because when you mentioned earlier about you know people seeing all these visions and then trying to make it a doctrine and i think a lot of the um cults and erratic teachings that have um that sometimes permeate um unfortunately even the church sometimes has started from that place of people like you said genuinely maybe they actually genuinely encountered had a an experience with god with the holy spirit but in an attempt to now make it a doctrine, yeah, um, there's not found in anything. There, it's some errors because if, if you can't, if you can't, if it's something that God just gave to you, that that you know, you, you can't really show us the scripture for it. You know, the, the, that you can open up a gateway for error to you for know, error, all kinds of things to happen. People just begin to say, yeah, and I think some of because the, you see, you you will now say, then he told me this. And when somebody else is relaying it, they will say, he told him this and that. 
it, yes. it, it, yeah, it becomes yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. it's a gateway it just, that just it, 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 it opens up all kinds of things yes so you yeah you, 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 that, that's uh, awesome well I think I'm, um, I'm done um, yes so if you have any offerings you want to give please feel free to give does anybody have any prayer request? They want us to pray some for you. We pray quickly in the next three minutes because we're going to finish at night. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. There's a big smile on Dagwa's face. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, the Lord bless you all. The Lord keep you. And um, uh, I, I pray that his favor will, will, will sit upon you. And his grace will manifest in your life. And I pray that the secret things which belong to God will remain with him and the things he reveals to you will be for you and your children. Your eyes will be open to those things that are revealed so that you may do all the works of this law. The Lord bless and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you, Pastor.